Hello. Wow. That's like, like, well, that's like looking through a foggy window. <laughs> yeah, the, the picture quality isn't going to be anywhere near as good, but it looks like it's at least keeping up. Yeah, it's keeping up. Yeah. I wonder. Um, run your finger over the camera. Is there something on the camera? Or? Oh, there we go. There we go. Cat licked your laptop, mate. <laughs> Those rugged vomits. <laughs> Trust him for nothing. Yeah. Well, that's great. I told, him to get my, I told him to get my algebra homework done. That's the sort of spot they leave me in, man. <laughs> yeah. Trust the kitty cat. Yeah. Well, that's great. I understand, mate, about the uh, computer frustrations. <laughs> it's never ending. I, I actually breached a, what, I don't know, a standing thing I did where I would never use computers about three years ago. I've been learning about them ever since. It's it's very frustrating at times. Yeah. Okay, all the time. Yeah. Well, I, I had one trying to forward that Easter message, uh, E-A-S-T-E-R message that you sent. Uh, you know, who is she and all this stuff, uh, uh, that, that video, just the email was not wanting to forward it to people. I'm going, you know, pretty soon it's going to be sort of irrelevant until next year if I don't get this out, you know? <laughs> yeah. The, uh, the way I solved my computer problems is I switched over to Apple, uh, and I just went and got one of those, um, we saved up a bit. And it was when we opened the salon, so I just cunningly slid it into the salon budget. And we got an iMac. And so there's no hardware or anything. It's just all in one screen. And you got the camera, the keyboard, it's all together. And there's no... It never fails. It never shuts down. It never has any problems. I, I haven't had any problems since. So I, used to, I, I would do three days' worth of work, and the thing would shut down. And you'd lose all your work. And I was yeah. pulling my hair out. So um, it was time to upgrade. So, there were yeah. things I remember writing emails to people that I would spend. I remember one in particular. I was ready to do something very unmessiah like. Yeah. I'd spent like five hours researching and writing out this email. And I tried to send it on Yahoo. I have had a lot of problems with Yahoo Mail. And if it wasn't for the fact that, that that was the address that most of the people had, I, I'd probably just switch it out. Hmm. And I'm sure there's a way to go ahead and do it anyway. I just haven't gotten that far along yet. Hmm. I tried to send it, and you know, I was like, oh, sorry, there was a problem sending your message. Of course, all the contents are lost. Yeah. Oh, no way of getting that back. Yeah. Cool. I, from that point on, I've, I saved every email into my drafts folder before I sent it. Hmm. Or I'd you know, copy it and put it on the desktop or whatnot, something like that mm. before I sent it out, especially when I did a lot of work on it because that was not cool. Mm. But you have to be thankful to the Father, you know, even, uh, even in trials and tribulations, you have to be thankful because yeah. he's teaching. Because you know? then when you do have to redo it and rewrite it or re-record something and do it all the second time, it's always better the second time. <laughs> More practice. Yeah, sure. And it's good. It's good practice. I mean, we have we have a tendency to just be thankful whenever he blesses us, you know. But we have to learn to be able to praise him even whenever we're going through hard times, because that's that's where faith is kindled. That's where faith is really tested, is in those hard times when we go through hardships. Hmm. Uh, it may sound awkward, but to even say thank you when you stub your toe, you know. Hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Because he's going to, you're going to come back from that one, too. Mm. You know, mm. it, it may seem kind of strange to do it, but I mean, it's what Scripture says. Mm. Thankful in the trials and the hardships, you know. Yeah. Is this too bright? Let me see how this does. No. No, it's better with it on. Okay. Yeah. It seems like my face is glowing. You know those big lights that you'd say put under your car awning? Yeah. Um, and you switch them on and they just light up the whole 
garage or the whole carport. Yeah. I have two of those shining on the ceiling because if it shone on me, it blinded me. But I have two of them up there, and they are so hot. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it always gives enough light in the receiver. Now I feel like I look a bit dark. If I turn this little lamp on here, you know, but that's in my eyes. I don't want that on. Does that look better if I put the light lamp on? No, no. Now you look sickly almost. Yeah. Hey, pause for just a second. I'll be right back. Yeah. That's too bad. That's a brother calling from uh, another state I've been talking to. I'll just have to call him back. Yeah. I heard it going off in the background. Normally, I'd have it right here. But mm. It's charging. Thing keeps running out of batteries. So, uh, you're in the same office I spoke to you in before, but it looks like you're in some kind of a cubicle. Or something. No, it's just a cupboard behind me. So, you, normally, so I'll show you. That's where I do the show with Chris on about that angle there. Oh, I see. Okay. That's about that angle where I do the show with Chris. <laughs> That's the last show I did with you guys. If you open that door, there's the dunny out there. Oh. That's my usual view. <laughs> I don't get to look at the dunny. And then if we That's... keep swinging around this way, here's a mattress, and then you see the green wall. Um, and that's where we shoot, shoot with Lou. That's good. So then I don't have to put a curtain up. I just shoot with Lou on the green wall, and I can it acts as a green screen. So uh, It is a very nice. I like your form, you know. <laughs> yeah. the, it's very small. There's inspiration up to me. It's a very small should... room, and you can see there's all the Lego there. All the boys yes. play the Lego on the desk there while I'm working. They come in and... So who, put, who did the painting? I did the painting about, uh, oh, when we first became Natsurim. Uh, just got really excited and I thought, oh, and you know how much paintings are. Oh, we, we just got married and moved into a place in seven My years. G'day, Tina. Hello. <laughs> That's clever. <laughs> <laughs> where's your where's your beloved uh, we're hoping she's to just meet outside Amy. she'll be in soon yeah oh yeah she'll All be right. in soon. you need to pull up my chair yeah. i don't know what she's doing yeah. <laughs> pampering so how was uh passover it was wonderful yeah yeah we uh we had the two nights I think the boys stayed up till about midnight. They did, they did all right. And I think mm -hmm. I stayed up another hour or two longer. I forget now. Didn't make it all night. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's supposed to be a visual. But, mm. Well, having a few people around would help. Yeah, yeah. Now, there's nobody around here. So, uh, we Skyped in with uh, Chris and Victoria and uh, Jason and Yuli and the guys up north. But uh, there wasn't much conversation because there was just so much noise. So many people on both ends and Skype can't handle that. Skype's got very delicate yeah. ears. Got to be very, <laughs> got to be gentle with Mr. Skype. Takes everything personal. Oh, yeah. We <laughs> yeah. feel sorry for Skype. Yeah. Trying yeah. so hard. You have to make sure everything's perfect and speak nicely to it. <laughs> so. uh, mm. we, we didn't. We had a brother over with his two children. It was their first time to celebrate Passover. Mm. Um, he's been very, very passionate for our Heavenly Father for a very long time. But uh, I, I think to some degree it's with people just finding the courage and not really knowing, you know, whether or not they should see things differently than the Christian circus. They're like, well, that's all there is, right? You know, and then whenever they come into contact with people who love the Messiah very much, are on fire for you, but uh, would not identify that way, you know, am I a Christian? They see that and they're like, oh, you know, yeah, <laughs> okay, what? Mm -hmm. And and he's, uh, he's coming along in that vein, you know, in that same way. Um, 
we've celebrated almost all. I think now we have celebrated all of the feasts with him. We just met him about 10 or 11 months ago. So this was the first time to actually go through Passover. Uh, he had gotten up at about 3.30 that morning before the vigil. Mm -hmm. He came over for both nights, uh, or they came over for both nights, and he had, he had gotten up at 3.30 that morning. So he wasn't much for a vigil. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was falling asleep by 10 and just go. <laughs> it's all right. Well, and Colin was reading scriptures, so that, that tends to put a, a, a sleepy nod sleep. on people sometimes. Mm. It's, it's very soothing when he's reading. Yeah. How do you like that, huh? An ethereal voice just coming out of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah. a, it's like the voice of an angel. You'll have to uh, record relaxation tapes for people to sleep to. Scripture to sleep to. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I try to make it fun. I don't know what anybody would go to sleep when I was. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Do all the little voices that goes with it, you know, try to get nice inflections and yeah. good, good meter and rhythm going yeah. to it. Yeah. They don't care. <laughs> Wonderful. So the kids, have had, to, the kids had a good time? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I always like it when we wash their feet. Yeah, of course. Yeah. We have a little vessel. Uh, the last place that we lived, uh, we were renting from a, a lady who probably one of the bis biggest bisque ceramic artists in Texas. Uh of course, live in a little town, you know, called Bertram, Texas or whatever. And mm -hmm. she was renting out a house that was behind her home um, the for the business. It was actually two different lots. So it wasn't like we're on two different streets, but it just so happened to be that they were behind one another. And um, she was really fantastic. She made us a jug, like a water pitcher wow. and basin and everything. Wow. And I got I gave her all the icons and everything and, and the uh, Paleo Hebrew Baruch Baba Shem Yahuwah and all oh, that. Wonderful. She hand painted it all on there and, and glazed it. Show us. It was, you got it there? Yeah, I'll get it. It'd take a minute to get Tino Run get it if you don't mind. Sure. If it's one of our little nutriments. If, if there's something fancy, you'll have it. <laughs> I don't know. There's just some things that are very precious, you know, and, and they come along, but uh, it's it's certainly been slow in the making. And that's just a couple of items. Yeah. The, the, the show. I use, this a, old thing. I use a laundry bucket. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, maybe one day, you know, you'll meet a really good uh, play artist. You'll know exactly what that is. Yeah. Oh, look. There's a person I recognize but have never met. Hello. Hello. Oh. There's a person I've recognized but have never met. Yes, oh, well, same to you. <laughs> nice to meet you, sister. Yes, you too. Oh, I was showing Mark, we talked about our basin that we have for foot washing. Oh. Uh, we, I was explaining to him that we used to rent a home from a ceramic artist, uh, and our lot was right behind hers, so... We got kind of close, and one time we asked her if she would make this up for us, and she did. Um, it looks like this, but it has a couple of things I'll show you. This is a – remember I told you I do scriptography, so every once in a while I come up with um, little icons or whatever to put on it, and I don't know how shiny that is. Is that glaring for you guys? Okay, there you go. Okay, good. That's one of the ones that I – I came up with, and then if you spin it around, you got Baruch Habab Hashem Yehua. That's fantastic. And the little feet. Yeah. Got to love, love the little feet, especially since it's for the foot washing. <laughs> and then if you look, if you look down inside of the bowl, hmm. wow. there's the olive ah. towel. Yeah. yeah. Is that backwards to you? No, no. We're the olive is the cross, isn't it? No. Oh. That's the towel. The olive and the towel. Oh, yeah. Well, you're, oh, backwards. Think you're backwards then. That's yeah. all right. Yeah. That's fantastic. Oh. Isn't that cool? She yeah. did really 
She did an stomach. awesome job. I just put these things for her down on a piece of paper, and she just, like, like she knew how to do Paleo Hebrew, you know? She just traced them on there. Did a great job. Wow. Really good job. We've, we've kept this around. It's one of our little precious things. We can do our feet washings on the vigil. I was telling them we used to put laundry bucket. Yeah, I was gonna say it's much better than ass. <laughs> that was a that was a new addition from last year. Uh, Amy, I want you to meet Tina. Tina, you need to get you need to get your There's chair. Your chair right here. You need to get your chair. There we go. This is my lovely wife. Hello, Hi, Amy. Hi, Tina. How you going? I've heard Very a lot good. about you. I've seen you. <laughs> Same here. So you've seen me on the videos. Yes, we've been watching them. They're fantastic. Well, I'm glad you like them. Yeah. I, I just enjoy it. Yeah. You know, I don't really expect other people to watch them, but great if they do. Yeah. Yeah. If, if our fellowship is able to help anybody, that's wonderful. I was thinking whenever Mark was telling me, well, I'll record it and we'll, we'll make a show out of it. And I was going, that should be great for the two people who watch it. <laughs> It really, it's just nice to get to meet you guys, you know. I, I It was funny when I, I guess you may have heard the story, I don't know, but when, when I first met Mark, I'd seen his face 20, 30, 40 times, I, I, and I've spoken to him online a few times. I wasn't even thinking about it, but whenever we first talked, he was like, you know, yeah. you're, you're not an old person. <laughs> I said the same thing. <laughs> like, Mark goes, I spoke to Colin today. I'm going to put it on for you. Come watch it. I'm going, oh, okay, wow. Um, and then he puts it on. I went, oh, my goodness, he's so young. <laughs> you just, you, the way you write is just beyond your years. <laughs> That's very kind. Thank you. Yep. I appreciate it. He's a very good learner. He had a yeah. good teacher from his teenage years. Yeah. So. Well, Oh yes, I had a governess for a while there. My um, my uh, public education high school uh, public high school education was let's just say lacking. Yeah. Some degree. Left some holes in there, and uh, my dad is a behavioral neurologist and knew people and worked out a deal where um, one of his reading tutors got together with me and just sort of. Went through a lot of my curriculum, figured out where the holes were, and started filling them in. So, uh, in a literary way, by the time I didn't actually graduate in a traditional sense, I took a GED and passed it. But I didn't get anything wrong on the uh, on the English portion. <laughs> That's fantastic. So, yeah, well, the father really helped me out with that. You know, I'm I'm really glad that that uh, he's guided me in that way. So. In a uh, in a linguistic sense, I'm trying to uh, be more adept at what I'm doing uh, with communicating in the various different mediums, you know, either face to face, but more specifically, like in the emails, it's really difficult. And you have to, especially with English, you have to spend a lot of time focusing in on what you're trying to say. That was one of the things I don't know if you guys have ever read Alexander Hislop's book. Yeah. The yeah. two babbles. Two babbles. Brilliant. Oh my God. Mm. Yeah, but the the mm. English is like you know you're used to reading these Shakespeare sort of fictional novels or this you know fantasy or whatever you know or just these sort of light hearted freewheeling mm -hmm. sort of stories or whatever and you yeah. can let your mind wander and imagine things whatever you want. He does not write like that at all. <laughs> so he'll say something. You'll be like, hmm, I wonder if that means, and then he'll be like. Whoosh! No, it means this. <laughs> you're like, oh, yeah, of course. I, I know. I, you're right. And then you keep reading, you know, and it starts to wander up again. Well, he might be talking about, well, that's a very interesting statement. Do you think he means, no. I mean, you're like, yes, of course, of course. <laughs> Stay on focus. <laughs> right, yeah. Don't get me wrong. He, is a, he was a tremendously gifted writer. Mm. And author, he, you know, you cannot misunderstand what he's saying. He mm. won't let you. Mm. But for that, it makes it very difficult to read, you know, because mm. we're really not used to that style. I'm sure the people back then really appreciated his slavish attention to detail. Mm. 
but um, it's a little bit more cumbersome for people, I think, these days. I guess I don't know about you guys. It was for me. Yeah, it was pretty heavy. Yeah. <laughs> Not light reading. I do recommend it to people. It was part of. Uh, it was part of the. Uh, hey. <laughs> you just got short. <laughs> I don't get to go. To I was hoping it wouldn't be too obvious. <laughs> I felt too tall. We're trying to get comfortable. <laughs> We've never actually tried to squeeze both of each other in the same screen. I'm just looking at our screen, and I'm like up here, and Mark's down there, and I'm like, maybe I should go down a little. <laughs> well, that's because I'm short. You know that. Right, I'm <laughs> if I move the screen back, Is then it? I can. That's better. See, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just leaning back. That's all. Maybe I need to do that. Yeah. I like to move up close like this. Yeah. There that's you better. Go. See, that's very cool. There, Mark. Hi. <laughs> that's that's my woman. <laughs> we, can call, we can call it up close. <laughs> Matt's room, up close. Up close. <laughs> An in-depth look. <laughs> <laughs> Something. We had the tongues earlier. Remember, we talked about it. Right, yeah. was telling me his tongue. I was saying, I was going like this. He's like, you know, you, you, I can't smell your breath. I'm going, <laughs> I found out it was rude to show your tongue in Texas. <laughs> yeah, you know, are you wagging your tongue at me, boy? <laughs> <laughs> you don't. You don't be wagging your tongue down here in these parts. What radioactive goop are you drinking, Tina? Green oh, yes, it's on your nose. <laughs> it's a protein shake. Okay. Oh, wow, that's good. She's on one of these, uh, what's it called? I can't remember what it's called. Standard process. Diet. Wonderful. It's a vitamin cleanse. Oh, that's good. Mm. Today's Working. actually my last day, so. Oh, wow. Big party tonight, eh? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not that kind of a deal. Yeah. Trying to change over our whole lifestyle, really. Yeah, just, we understand. Every time we move, we have to readjust and find all of our connections again. And, you know, to, to good quality food. And it's just very difficult to stay healthy. Yeah. And Especially when you're so busy. It's just easy to pop by somewhere and get something. and. Mm -hmm. For it. Oh it's my gosh. horrible. Do you move very easily? We had been there, but we've been here almost two years. We usually move about every three or four years. Um, Just try to go where the spirit leads us. Yeah. You know? but, but I think we're here to stay for a while. Emissaries. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, emissaries get pushed from place to place, you know, a lot. If I had my way, We'd be in an RV, traveling the country, uh, spreading the word. That's so but funny. We were just talking about that man, yesterday. This man here uh, feels that the children need stability until they're at least a little bit older. So mm. we're going to stick with that. And then maybe we'll do the RV thing later. And you know, homeschool them on the road. What? Well, you guys are in the same sort of position we are. You know, we had our children yeah. young. That way, when we get a little bit older, we can kick, kick them, them out and run. <laughs> kick them out, and then we can go and do what we want to do, and we'll still have some life left in us. Exactly. You know, um, <laughs> it, uh, it had a very profound effect on me being raised in the north. I grew up in the north for the first half of my childhood, and then they moved me all the way down to the south and it was a whole nother world you know and everybody that i made friends with and i did make friends it wasn't that but everybody i made friends with had a better friend somebody they would known since they were little you know so i was not really anybody's best friend and when you do that when we do that we put our children in a position where they've got to do They've got to engage in more and more risky behavior in order to fit in, yeah. you know, to feel like part of the crowd, get mm -hmm. people's attention, that kind of thing. And it's just really difficult on them, you know. So until our children are pretty close to past the school age, we want to stay about here. We may move houses, but keep them in the same school. And This is something we've very much prayed for. Obviously, you know, it can change all that if he needs to, but. We've just prayed that 
you know, Father, can we not move around for mm, about eight to ten years would be nice. Mm. After that, I I don't know what will happen. We're praying for him to bless us with some land to grow grapes on. <laughs> you yeah, know, be self-sufficient, that sort of thing. Yeah. Have a farm, some animals. You know, if we had to in a pinch, we could just not go to Walmart and that'd be okay. <laughs> You guys have a have a super supermarket down there? Yeah, we just got Costco not long ago. Costco. Oh, I love Costco. Costco's otherwise, good. Otherwise we just got <laughs> Woolworths and Coles and things like that. You heard of Woolworths? Coles? Yeah. Oh, Coles yeah. I've heard of. That's Woolworth, for clothing, right? Woolworths is a uh, a business over here that has really just gone down the tube, so ah. we don't have a lot of those anymore. We I have think like lot, dollar stores and things like that, Walgreens, CVS, but not not Woolworths. I think a lot of businesses are really focusing on foreign markets because it's it's just a really you know difficult terrain to tread in America anymore. Hmm. Our government has made it really hard to stay in business. Hmm. You know. Hmm. And they're making it harder all the time. So mm. a lot of companies are just picking up and moving. Mm. I did have a Woolworths growing up, and I really did like it. <laughs> it's a neat store. So, hey, Amy, how are you enjoying that new baby? Oh, but, yeah, uh, she's wonderful. She's asleep she's at the moment, cool. thank goodness. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, they're a handful, I know. Is she any different than how the boys were at that age? I think she is, um, and I don't know if it's just my in my mind because she's a girl. I think I see everything differently, but she's definitely more demanding um, and more high maintenance than the boys ever were. Like she just wants attention all the time, and she wants to be the center of everything. And I don't know that could also be the being the youngest of five children. You know, she yeah. gets that all the time. The boys are always doting on her and they pick her up and they carry her around and do everything with her and they just she's constantly getting entertainment from them. So I guess she expects that nonstop. Um, so I think that's one of the biggest differences, hey, that mm. we've noticed with her. She's just like she needs attention and she needs it now. <laughs> and you're like, be quiet. Yeah. yeah, if you pick her up a lot, she'll act that way. Yeah. Um, they can walk, let them. <laughs> That's all I can say. <laughs> she wants to. She wants to walk. She's like yeah. she's standing up and walking around a furniture, and she's desperate to run with the boys, and she really wants to. So I won't be too far off. Which would be yeah. keep a camera on. Enough. We got one of we got Allison's first steps on tape. Oh really? Yeah. It's so rare to get those first steps. <laughs> yeah, it's it's, it's hard. a special moment. Mm -hmm. well, you'll see her standing there. Look, yeah. and we had to shoot a couple of videos. They're just kind of holding on to something, looking, you know. Yeah. And I'll take out the camera real quick. And we had a couple of failed attempts before we got the actual ones, but it worked out in the end. And we got them. It was great. Oh, that's she cute. took about three steps and plopped down, and then she stood back up and took about, like, eight more. Oh. It was a great video. And the shit. It was. I'm very fond of getting embarrassing moments. <laughs> Well, I have yeah. one, uh, one of my daughters leaning back in her high chair and then just totally eating it. Oh, it was terrible. She I, fell. She was leaning Big back, time. you know. Not, Don't do that. Sure enough. Oh, she just ate it. It was bad. Like, oh, she wasn't hurt or anything, but it is so on tape. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> sorry. I have so got you on tape. Anyway. <laughs> And and, and uh, diaper butt has always been one of my favorite things. It's just cute. Uh, we got a picture of our second oldest when she was like three. Oh no 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 no! I, and this is just the cutest thing. I I, <laughs> I like it. It's funny. She she get a little saggy. <laughs> there was one where where she was inspecting the underneath of the the sink the sink and. She looked like a plumber, you know, the stereotype. <laughs> you get it. <laughs> I wasn't going to take it there. We already started, so I had to finish. <laughs> <laughs> well, we noticed that um, 
we noticed towards the beginning of the year when we took our kids up to um, my parents, they've got a holiday unit, and because uh, it's been so frantic around here lately, and the work, and you know, doing all this stuff, and Amy's full on all the time, she's homeschooling, and you know, all these other things going on. We found when we took a week off and took them. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Homeschooling is not easy. Mm. No, it's pretty full on. <laughs> yeah, all the time. Yeah. Anyway, continue. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, no, we found when we took the boys up to the holiday unit and they were swimming every day and they, they never once asked for, you know, food. They never once, like we fed them, but they, they, didn't, ask, <laughs> they didn't ask for, you know, <laughs> we want food. <laughs> you know, when you're at home and they might be bored there every five minutes, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. Yeah, they didn't once ask for food. They didn't once ask for television. They didn't ask for anything. They were just toys. swimming. They didn't ask for any toys. They were just out playing in the forest, out swimming, out. And we thought, this is more important than anything, you know, we've got oh, yeah. that we want to hold on to. Like, how often, like, I look now, my eldest is seven years old. Where, where the hell did that go? So, right. it's, um. You blink and you're like, you're so big. What yeah. happened? Yeah. <laughs> I, I missed that. <laughs> So That's then we, why the picture. So then we saw this yeah. thing on the on the news. There was this family with with nine children, and they were going around. They gutted out the inside of a, a coach, a bus, and they had huh? they had done it themselves, renovated it with all these uh, spa bath, toilet, master bedroom, bunks, you know, tables, chairs, everything, and um, big annexes. And that they, they were towing a trailer behind it with a van in it, and they just had lived on the road for six years. And we were just sat there with our mouth open going, oh, my goodness, this is wonderful. So we, when we pay off, yeah. we're just going to pay off a little bit of, of debt and then we're, um, we're going to hit the road. It's not going to stop anything we're doing here because laptops and Skype is, is, you know, satellite now anyway. So you could do all that That's stuff anyway. We just won't have to yeah. use green screens. We'll have real backgrounds. <laughs> there you go. Right. And so we've... we're in uh, Wisconsin today. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's right. I don't know where there is over there in, in your neck of the woods. But... It is wrong. We're in the app. Take... This yeah, is a man. dingo. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Look here. This is it George really the Aborigine. Mad. We've met him today. <laughs> yeah. He is a salty. He gets really mad when I go like this. <laughs> <laughs> I love Verwin. I, I miss him. You know, he was he was great. I don't know if you guys have got enough of him down there. Who was that? Steve Allen. The Steve crocodile. Oh, Steve Allen. Yeah, yeah. He was great. Well, if you're gonna st swim with a stingray, what do you expect? <laughs> but I mean, how much like completely insane, lethal stuff had he already done? He must yeah. have been getting to the point where he thought he was invincible. Yeah. I mean, he touched. He played with like every. Deadly animal on her. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Look here. <laughs> Y'all hear about how he died? Yeah, Stingray. That's what's it. I mean, yeah. like, exactly what happened? No, I Do just think know? he got stung by a Stingray. I think that's what happened. What I heard is that they, they actually had the Stingray in the boat, oh. and he picked it up, and it just reached around and stabbed him right in the heart. Oh. That's what I heard. Wow. I don't know if it's true or not, but Possibly, probably, yeah. He's always picking stuff yeah. up, so I wrote it. Mm. <laughs> Didn't your mama tell you not to play with that thing? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that's our that's our plan, you know. Just uh, maybe not long term, but and we've got some friends up north, Jason, and he's really and Yuli, and they're really excited to do it too. They've got young kids, so imagine our kids. So. Um, He's been my Living best. the dream. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So, uh, because I look at what it... Oh, there it is. Say hi. This is Micah. Oh. Micah, hi. right? Say hi. Are you leaving? Don't leave. I want to say hello. Straight, Can you wave? So show me a t-shirt. Hello? Can you my t-shirt? It's my few t-shirts. Rock star. I am a... Something rock star. Future. Future rock star. Future rock star. Yes. Mm. I'll bet you are. What do you play? The guitar? He hates it when I talk like that. Do you play the guitar? He doesn't play anything yet. 
He's you play only, the piano? He's only two and a half. You sing? He plays with blocks, Dad. Oh, <laughs> yep. That's great. And then we've got Luca. He started playing the drums for a little while. Oh, Say hello, hi. Colin. Hello, Tina. Say hi. Hi. Nice to see you, Luca. How are you? Say hi. How are you? Say, I play the iPad. That's what I play. How goes it? <laughs> Say hi. Hello. 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 Uh, Good to meet you. Was it you who did the recording for Passover? Yeah. Yeah, you Hello. did that last year. Thought your voice sounded Hello. familiar. Good job, mate. Really <laughs> enjoyed that. Keep up the good work. Yeah. They're saying they good liked job. your Passover video. And the Passover video you did? Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. You must love Yahushua a lot to be helping him out with his ministry. You love Yahushua? <laughs> yeah, no. I should get some. Would you like to meet some of our children, Luca? Would you like to meet Colin's children? Let's see if we can get Jacob and Allie to come in. Okay. I know I can get my two younger ones to come in, but... <laughs> The older ones are a little bit more elusive, elusive creatures. Yeah. You don't want to get too close to them. They bite. <laughs> <laughs> well, really just the oldest one. We've had, we had a real interesting exchange because she's, she's getting to the age where she wants to feel it, you know. Oh, here's Jacob. Come on in here, Jacob. <laughs> Say shalom. shalom. How are you, mate? Jacob, this is Luca. That's his brother in the background. Uh, Mike, I believe. And then that's Amy and brother Mark. Sister Amy, brother Mark. Is it a little boy, Amy? No, this is Amy right here. Oh, okay. And okay. that's Luke. I don't think he likes the thingy in his ear. Oh, and this is Allison. Jacob, uh, Jacob's our son, eight years old. I don't think you've met him yet. You remember uh -huh. Allison? Yeah, yeah. Amy, you haven't met Allison. This is Allison. Hello. Hi. How are you guys? How old are you guys? I'm eight. I'm ten. Wow. Yeah. Hi. 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 I'm ten. Wow. I'm pretty sure she was two years. Two years old. Yeah, two years older before I was born. Hey, do you know where they are? Australia? How'd you know that? Because oh. mommy told us. She said, she said, Jacob Riley, someone in Australia that wants to talk to you. Australia's a long way away. Is that, did you say Micah? This is Micah, Ooh. yeah. You want to say hi, Micah? Micah? I don't know how to. There you go. Hi. Hi, Micah. This is Jacob. How old is Micah? He's two and a half. Oh. He'll be three. Maybe. And this is Allison, Ooh. right here. Yeah. So, hello, Allison. Say hi. So he's basically 250. What are you playing? Baseball? No, two and a half years. Show what you're playing with. 700. Close to 800, 800 days old. Get closer. That's a Lego. Is that Wonder Woman? Yeah. <laughs> Looks like Wonder Woman. Uh, speaking of that, I want to show you. He something. loves Legos. Yeah. Take a big on Legos. Superman and Batman. Real quick. He likes Lego too. He's going to show you some of his Lego. Are you watching? I didn't tell you this. I got to, I got to witness to somebody in Spanish this week. You speak Spanish? Not very much, but enough, I guess. <laughs> it was a couple of people from a local fellowship who had come by trying to invite us. Don't. Trying to give me those tracks. I think they might have been. Wow. And they're showing me something, something you know, the nombre para J E S U S, you know, the name of. And I said, ¿Tú sabes la nombre? The nombre real, the real, you know, the real name. And he says, No sabes. And I said, Esta es Yahusha. Yahusha of Nazareth, in Hebrew, you know, in Hebrew, I told him. He said, uh, you know, he, he seemed really interested by that. And I gave him uh, a 
them out for my people in Spanish. Ah, I yeah. got of it from Lou once upon a time, thinking it would come in handy, but now I know who it was for, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Handed it over. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And Hey. Oh. Hey, buddy. Say hello. Hey. How goes it? Oh, oh <laughs> your mom <laughs> fell out. Say, my name's Brandon. Hey, Brandon. How goes it? <laughs> oh, yeah. that. He's like, um, it goes. I don't wanna. <laughs> Let this one have a turn. Yeah. Oh, who's Texted that? Texted it. <laughs> no, I'm in the lake. That was not a brand new lake. Okay. Hello there. Can you wave for me? Say hi. Can you wave? Shalom. Can you wave? Say hello. Say hi. Say hi. Can, can you say your ABCs yet? Need that green thing. Oh, here's a very here's a very important need number. That green thing. Sugar. Sugar burger. Sugar turbo. Sugar turbo. Sugar turbo. Sugar turbo. Sugar turbo. He's a sweet boy. Like okay. A nice close up with the sugar Kit Kat. Hey, he does see? I, I got the thing that I want. <laughs> 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 uh, and Jake's gonna do. I want that thing. I'm gonna show you my Lego now. This. Oh. It's a Lego spaceship. Whoa! Can you hear? That's oh. fantastic. You've got a spaceman thing, haven't you? You haven't got a spaceship though, have you? But the, but an alien actually goes inside of this. Colin Melikin. Yeah. Yes. Ooh, <laughs> it looks like you've lost a few pieces, son. Yeah, it's kind of falling apart. I have a bunch of Legos. Yay! You want to talk about Lego? Too bad you guys are like on the other side of the world. Maybe I could get together and play. We can set up a Skype call. They can bring theirs in. And they can sit here at the screen. There you go. Look at what I got. <laughs> That's wonderful. Okay. Isn't that Thank cool? You sure. Have you guys ever that. been to the States? Or have y'all always just stayed in Australia? Um, I've been over, but no one, the boys and Mark haven't, when I was a kid. Um, really? My parents, uh, my older brother, died um and so my parents couldn't cope with staying where we were so we packed up and went to america <laughs> um and we went to um we we're in california i think at a ranch uh -huh. does that sound like it would make sense I yeah. Only, yeah okay <laughs> uh, i was only eight years old and we stayed there for about six months, I think. And we tra we did travel around quite a, a lot of places. Like, I know we went to Seattle and we went to San Francisco, we went to Oregon and Boise, oh. Idaho. Uh, those oh, are places. I oh, really? Yeah. He um, said he would take me to Oregon one day. I'd love to go, but I still haven't been. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. We went up to 101, I guess, all the way up through to Washington. Yeah, you might be too know. young to remember the name yeah. of the road. Did, did you go to Redwoods? Did you see the gigantic Redwood trees? I don't remember. I remember bits of it, you know, but not everything. Um, yeah. But we were, my parents were at a Christian school, um, a school of ministry or something it's called, with um, with the vineyard people. And um, <clears throat> so, and with them we sort of drove around in a bus, all these places, you know, going to different circuses and and being wonderful and all that sort of thing. Um, yeah. What was his name? Whose name, sorry? Your older brother. Your brother's name? Oh, Andrew. Andrew. He, um, he died of, well, he had cancer when uh, he just turned 15 um, when, when he died. 
he got cancer and um, unfortunately it was the chemotherapy that ended up killing him but yeah so he was getting better and he'd gone into remission and then all of a sudden just died from the chemo so I mean I was only eight years old but I mean things like that don't leave your memory <laughs> no matter how old you are. Yeah. Well, my condolences. Yeah I'm sorry to hear that. Better late than never. <laughs> So, I think now being a parent, I can completely understand what my parents went through at the time you right. don't realize, but now I think if one of my kids went through all that and ended up dying, I would just, I'd probably pack up and run away too, <laughs> because you just had yeah. to go yeah. on when your kids are dying. Hard, hard to know how we'd react to it. It's You never know until you get there. Probably yeah. one of the hardest things that any, mm -hmm. any parent can ever go through. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Goodness that there's been so many discoveries as far as the holistic health, mm, yeah. cancer, and all of that area. So that's a wonderful thing that they're researching with. Um, yeah, that's harsh. Fifteen. Yeah. Goodness. Whole life ahead of me. Man. Wow. Mm. Well, um, what was your overall impression of the United States? Did you enjoy your time here? I loved it. And I said to Mark, we have to take the boys over there because well, I, I really did love it. We went, of course, we, our trip started with Disneyland, so you know that gave a good impression <laughs> for an eight-year-old. Right. Uh -oh. um, <laughs> we did three di three days at Disneyland and then a day at Universal Studios, and then we went on to the other thing. But I I don't know, I just loved it. It's very different to Australia. You guys are all very different to us. I would love to go to Australia, especially yeah. New Zealand or something. Oh yeah! Wow. That'd be wonderful. It'd be so cool. Um, Sydney would be cool. Uh, we see it all the time, you know. Uh, the, we see the amphitheater there. You know, it's it's a an iconic. The Opera House. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. It's well, funny. I, I don't know what Texas is like, but Sydney's filthy. <laughs> I know. I was going to say it's, it's funny that you say you want to come Sydney. here because we're catching the train yesterday from mm. the city. We went to go see my brother. Just had twins. So we went to go see them, caught the train all the way over there, and the trains and buses back, and it's just disgusting. It's dirty really? and filthy, and there's not Maybe very many Australians left. Um, and it's just, like, really um, – it's dirty, wasn't it? There's police mm. everywhere, which terrified mm. me because I thought, why do the police need to be everywhere? <laughs> um, and so it was just – we were just like, okay, let's get out of here. This is horrible. It's not very nice. But, you know, the tourist places, I guess, going to the Opera House and the Harbour Bridge is all exciting and fun, and the boys get excited. We went there the other week for a homeschooling excursion to the Opera House, um, and yeah. the boys think it's all fun and exciting and stuff. But I guess when you live here and you see how what it's really like, it's really depraved and disgusting. Mm. It's like yeah. the home of the gay and Mardi Gras, Sydney. Yeah, uh, gotcha. Don't want so, to miss that. Um, <laughs> Welcome to Sydney. <laughs> you, guys to, uh, you guys been over to uh, New Zealand? No, but we have wanted to. Hey, it's, it looks really nice over we there. And they a, have a chocolate factory. We we planned a couple of trips. It's <laughs> <laughs> got priorities and all that. <laughs> we, uh, we got a, we planned a few years ago. We planned a couple of different trips at different times to do a little, one of those little camper van things, but we never got around to it. So. If you guys ever want to come to the United States, we live right next to Austin. Just fly on in. We'll pick you up. Austin, oh, yeah. Texas. We'll see you tomorrow. Austin, Texas. <laughs> Just make sure, make sure you learn how to ride a horse first because we ain't got no cars around here. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna I have believed to ride you for a split second there. I was like, oh. <laughs> it's funny, you know. People yeah. really do. That, I've, had, I've had questions like that. You guys live in Texas? Well, where, where do you have to keep your horse? <laughs> Actually, we kind of live out in the country, we so occasionally cars. you'll you'll be driving down the road and there will be a couple, three horses on the road. You know, men are, are riding Mounted down the road. Horses. Mounted horses. I'm not sure why they do it, but we have horses all over the place out here. And cattle and donkeys and goats and all kinds of stuff, but it's wonderful. So you, how far away would you guys be from, like, the city? 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, I mean, we're like three minutes from Kyle, but we're like 10 minutes from Austin. And you can hardly even tell that you've left a town hmm. in between. So it's it doesn't feel like we're that far away. Yeah. 
it's 15 minutes from where I work, and that's in South Austin. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. And it's you, where you guys live is is kind of country, but not super country, right? Yeah, it's pretty much suburbia, but it's not like Sydney, CBD, rush, rush out. It's not like that. It's a bit more relaxed out here, but it's still suburbia. It's the outskirts of Sydney. So it takes us like an hour and a half or an hour to an hour and a half to get into the city, like where the opera house and everything Mm. is. Um, We're like at the base of the mountains Mm. out here, but it is getting more and more popularised. Yeah. And busy and new housing estates going up and it's not exactly so the country. And- uh, I took a look around uh, Richardson a little bit on um, Google Maps or Google Earth. Oh, uh, Richmond. And- yeah. Oh, Richmond. I'm sorry. That's it, Richardson. Richmond. And uh, you guys have a lot of the same plant life even. I, I-, I think Texas Tip- would be. Your great myrtles are much bigger than ours. <laughs> You guys got crepe myrtles and all that stuff. It looks a lot like Texas to me. Yeah. yeah. Um, when I was looking around in there and what I was able to see, it looked like Texas. Mm. I don't know. It might not be that big of a shot. <laughs> most people right think, in. Yeah. yeah, most people think of Texas as being like just a big bowl of dirt, yeah. wide open spaces with rugged characters walking around spitting, you know. Mm. <laughs> It's actually kind of humid here, though. Is it humid where you guys live? Yeah. 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 They're only about an hour. Well, it's um, desert, you know, like Australia's a, a desert country. Hey? There's a lot of desert around, so I guess it's similar sort of environment. Yeah. Not mm. that we live in the desert here. <laughs> right. Same the weather here. Is, the weather here is absolutely hideous. It's either stinking hot, pouring with rain, freezing cold. Sometimes all that happens on the one day. Uh, whereas, <laughs> See, that sounds just like Texas. You know what you're going to get with They'd Texas. They'd say you don't like the weather, wait five minutes. Yeah. It'll change. <laughs> As- aside from getting a, doing the bus idea, we're longing to just go back to Cairns, where it's just like tropical paradise. So, and, and they have a bit of wind about the weather there, and we're like, oh, yeah, yeah. Bad for you, is it? <laughs> bad heat, <laughs> bad rain, but it's like it's tropical paradise there. You know. So what and, compelled uh, you to move south? Uh, well, we grew up here. We've okay. been here our whole life. But then about nine years ago, seven years ago, not long after we got married, we, we a group of us went up to Cairns. Eight. Yeah, eight. I think eight. I'm sorry. Yeah. We went up to Cairns and uh, we just wanted to get out. And Chris was the one who initiated it. He was like, he's been wanting to try and getting up there for like 20 years. And uh, he finally got up there. And uh, so they're all still up there. But we'd had a couple of shops and we'd sort of bored with it and didn't have any sort of, you know, much of an income and we're getting depressed. And so we thought we needed an option. So I rang up my dad and said, would you help me do a, do, do a shop up down here? And he said, yeah, I'll help you. So, yeah. And so this was really... So we came back down for the kids mm-hmm. around the family. Like all our families are down here. Mm-hmm. So all yeah. of my family, all of Mark's family... They're all here. They literally don't go anywhere. Mm. Um, and so we all came We came back down that so the kids can be around their grandparents and stuff. So they all love it. You know, they're happy. Mm. My parents are... Lovely. We've thought we might move that way because of our parents up north to the Panhandle where Lubbock and Amarillo are. And that's... Once you get outside of the city, that's what people think of as Texas. It's... Mm flat and it's dirt and there's nothing but cactus and mesquite trees around and oil under the ground and yeah it's you know i mean hundreds of thousands of acres of just nothing mm. the dirt it's not like that once you come <laughs> off the cap rock red dirt i remember when i was get, when we were going to move there that's where my parents live when my when when we were going to move there my dad was like well, Colin, you know, I was eight years old. Well, we're going to move to Lubbock, Texas. I said, what's it like? He said, I didn't understand what he meant, but I remember what he said. He said, uh, try to envision in your mind's eye a 10,000 square mile sheet of plywood covered in red dirt. <laughs> he said, Lub- Lubbock's so flat you can stand on a tuna can and see what your friend in Chicago's eating for breakfast. <laughs> and it, he was right. There is no native trees indigenous to that area other than the mesquite tree. 
So if you ever go to Lubbock, Texas, every tree that you see there was planted there, uh, aside from the mesquites. And uh, it's just, oh, it was awful. I, I spent 17 years of my life growing up in that desert. It was just absolutely horrible. We were 45 minutes away from the neck, the, a, a decent sized body of water. You know, I, I've never really been to a river in my life until Tina and I moved here into more Southern Texas. There's a lot of rivers around here. We actually, the first place that we landed was in San Marcos, Texas. And I was maybe 200 paces from a river. Yeah. You know, it was really nice. <laughs> I'd go there anytime I wanted to. Got to go fishing all the time. I like to fish. Do you, got, do you like to fish, Mark? No. Not a fisher? I don't have the patience. <laughs> <laughs> My dad does. Well, well, good on you. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm not much of an angler, but I do enjoy it. I like, well, I don't like fishing. I like catching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gets a little boring fishing, but anyways, like, that was neat. But I guess because we don't really like eating fish that much either. It's not really much motivation. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I've been getting into eating sashimi lately. Yeah. Do you ever eat sashimi? Is that sushi? Like it's it's uh, well, suji is wrapped in rice and seaweed. The sashimi is just it's like the fish by itself. It's belly meat, and you eat it with uh, pickled ginger and and uh, soy sauce and wasabi. Oh yeah. Kind of dip it in. You know, you get your wasabi and you mix it into the soy sauce, and then you get you a piece of uh, ginger and a piece of sashimi, some salmon or something. You know the belly meat or whatever, and you just dip it in there and eat it. Oh, it's really good. <laughs> I've had it three times now. Mm. It's too expensive to eat at a restaurant, so I go to, like, an Asian market. And you can buy it live. You have to, you know, and then cut it up yourself. Mm. Yeah. But uh, I, I just pickled ginger for the first time myself about a week ago. I was interested to see how it's going to turn out. Yeah, Ginger's really good for you, too. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, they eat it because of the antiseptic quality, you know, just in case there's something wrong with the fish, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Somewhat antiseptic. So if you mix the two, and by the time you get a belly full of wasabi and ginger, you know, anything in that fish ain't going to stay alive, <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> it's good stuff. You should give it a shot. Yeah. yeah. You got to go. I, I know what it is. If you ever go to a sushi bar and you don't know, anything about it. You're not with anybody who knows anything about it. It's like, yeah, you know, you're going to get something you don't really like. And you have to, especially as a natural, as a nuts are, you have to ask them everything that's in it. Cause you know, they're going to try to stick in the crab and the, you know, and the shrimp and the, and this and that. And you're just like, yeah, keep it out. I don't need any eel. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> but salmon and tuna, you know, did you get that email that I sent out to uh, to everybody about – somebody sent me this. It was the most amazing thing. It's clean and unclean explained by a zoologist. Not if you really. check your – I'm sure you've got it. When I just sent it out it? about an hour ago. Oh, yeah, I haven't got it yet. Yeah. You'll love it. It's yeah. great, man. It was so cool. It's about an hour long, but he sits there and explains the, uh, the physiology of – the unclean characteristics of these animals, why they're unclean. Yeah. You know, oh, that's, that's nice. interesting. Mm. because of their, you know, carnivorous natures or because they engage in coprophagia, uh, you know, things like that. The reason why the clean animals are clean is because they're back with the more original diet, which is purely vegetable based, you know, mm. and, uh, which is of course what, Adam and Paolo were originally eating, mm. but uh, just plants. Yeah, it, it's it's a really interesting thing. Give it a look if you want to get some time. Do, have you been pretty busy, huh, Mark? I noticed. I mean, I just being online, I've noticed you've either left your internet connection up all night, or you've been awake all night. <laughs> you were up all night long, huh? No, not all night. Not all night. 
you can talk. I sent you an email while we were on the train yesterday, and I said, that's midnight, he's not going to reply until the morning, and you replied straight away. <laughs> Had you just sent that to me? Not long after, yeah. Okay, see, I didn't know if you were talking about this or what, so I was... Okay. I thought you had sent it to me earlier in the day or something, and I was going, oh, I hope we didn't mean last. Okay. Yeah, because I said today, because I knew it would be, I didn't think you'd get it till the morning. Yeah. Right. Mm. Oh, that's why. Okay. <laughs> See, because when I saw it, I was going, well, we'd stayed up because, uh, you know, trying to have Havdala. We we usually stay up late on Havdala. Mm. You know, just try to keep the Sabbath going as long as we can. Well, we might be up till 12 or 1 in the morning, you know, usually on that night. Yeah. Uh, it's the only night that the children are allowed to stay up past their bedtime, so they take full advantage of it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was confused by that because I was going, you know, he does enough Skyping. He probably knows he's a day ahead of us. Yeah. So I wasn't sure. Yeah. I thought it was going to be, I thought I had emailed you in the middle of the night. So. It was. I think I got it like it. 12.55 or something. Yeah. I was just checking it right before I went to bed. Mm. Okay. I was just noticing because I've got it on my phone. If if I open my cell phone, it tells me that I've got an email and I have it linked to the, the Torah Institute web address. Because, you know, my personal email, I don't know. I'll get to that when I get to it. But yeah. whenever these questions come in or whatnot, I really want to get to it as quick as possible. Mm. But, so I had seen that one had come in, and I checked it before I went to bed just to see what it was. Every once in a while, somebody sends me something that really does seem kind of urgent. Mm -hmm. They're like, <clears throat> something's on, and it's bad, you know, and any prayer right then and there. So I try not to ignore it, mm -hmm. you know. Sometimes it, it feels convenient to wait on it, but not always the right thing. Mm -hmm. If it's not urgent, I don't deal with it until the second day, but. Yeah. You guys get questions there from uh, from your end? Do people send in stuff to you? No, uh, not a lot of questions. More just um, comments and queries about videos and can, where can we find this video and where can we, how can we get it and how can we order it or how can I download it? There's one today from a couple up in uh, Cooktown, far north Queensland. Chris and Henry, they uh, they like the videos and they want to work out how to download them. So, yeah. yeah, things like that. And uh, and they said they love, they, yeah, they love our show, and they said that uh, they wanted the link for the Zed Seats that you were talking about a couple of shows ago. The Hands of Valor. Right, that's what it was. So I, I think it was just Dr. Tom. Yeah, so I gave it, him that link. Gave it to him. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, so. I was going, I don't remember it anymore. <laughs> I felt on the spot there for a second. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> no, I found it. Those are pretty cool. I mean, I don't know how much they cost, but they were really nice. Did you see those, Amy? No, I haven't. Oh, sister, you got to look at them there. Okay. This woman does some wonderful work. I don't know how much they cost or anything like that. but And it's really pretty simple macrame, I'm sure. But mm. she's got a really versatile repertoire to yeah. work with, apparently, because she incorporates all these elements and puts them all together. And That's a they come out with really I'd love that. I want to get a production line going. Yeah, taste the kids. Oh, it's really. Food. I've got a. Uh, I, there's been a couple of times whenever we've had festivals with other brothers and sisters where you know we needed activities to do or whatever, and so I I wrote up a sheet about how to tie zitzi, at least the way that I tie them, and uh, you know all the explanations and stuff like that. And it's really pretty simple. I can I can send it to you if y'all want to see it. Yeah, it'd be great. Wonderful. Do you guys have other believers around you where you are now? We have one brother and sister, or sorry, we have one brother and sister about 15 minutes away that we've known for a while, but we don't necessarily see them a whole lot. Uh, he's a very busy man, and uh, we get together when we can. We didn't get together. We don't always get together for the feast or anything. We just see each other at other times. Okay. Uh, and then we've met about 10 months ago a man who is – very much on fire for the father, but had never owned any of the festivals. Didn't know that it was, oh, I don't know, okay not to identify as a Christian, you know. And and he's been 
he's been really great getting to know him and his, his two children have been just a real blessing. And they, they live like two minutes away. Oh, okay. Um, we're pretty new to this area, so we haven't had much opportunity to, to meet people. I mean, we spread the word all the time, obviously, you know, sharing the message here and there. And we get to meet people. There's a Christian brother and sister that we fellowship for, with for a good long while. Um, and that's important, you know, spending time with them, uh, even if they're not necessarily get just just being around and speaking the truth in their presence makes a lot of it's not getting into arguments about it but you know i say you they say G P D and whatever you know that it's getting to the point where i don't even really hear it anymore i think it's so between them and their father i do hope that they'll open their heart and let you convict them about his name but you know you're looking for fruit really hmm. just trying to understand is there love, joy, peace, patience? And they love us. They don't judge us for talking funny or whatever. So we don't judge them. And so all to, you know, the glory of Messiah. You know, he sees us getting along, mm -hmm. which is really important. Yeah. That's, I think in a lot of ways it's more important, I guess, than the truth itself is sort of a byproduct of love. I mean, if you have good, clean, pure love, the truth is a normal part of that. It's something that comes along. But the truth is not. It's interesting. If you look at the nine fruit of the spirit, which are love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, kindness, and self-control. You notice truth isn't listed in amongst those mm. as fruit. Mm. Because, you know, those are incorruptible things. You can take the truth and hurt people with it. Mm -hmm. Goodness knows some people do. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the truth itself will be a byproduct of good, pure, clean love. And, mm -hmm. it, you know, really the goal is not necessarily to get... You and I have discussed that before, you know, that the, mm -hmm. the information that comes in is a, is a mechanism for giving us peace in our lives. Yeah. We have a question, Father Anthony, you know, hey, what, how do you want me to worship you here, the Torah? Mm -hmm. Shelter, we know the answer. We've looked, we've looked through scripture and studied it and it tells you what the answer is. Uh, so that's peace in our hearts. It's just, it should be. We don't have that question anymore. We're not tossed and thrown about by every one of doctrine that comes along. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, but love is the goal, and I know whenever I'm spending time with with the, our Christian brothers and sisters, and and the real point is just how much we love Messiah. That, that that's an honor to him. We're not letting all of us have differences. We talk long enough, we'll discover ours. You know what I mean? It, it, that can't be the focal point. It's the fact that you got. Yeah. It's wonderful to get to meet you, you know. Mm -hmm. anything, say anything bad about my song last week. I really appreciate it. That really was terrible. Just take oh. one second. Boys, you're cutting out Colin's microphone. Take it outside, please. Go outside. Just go outside because it's cutting off his microphone. Why do I have to go outside? Not outside. It just means out of the room. It's outside the door. <clears throat> <laughs> go outside, mommy. I don't know why I have to go outside. He thought he was being kicked into the backyard. He's so cute. You children are just so precious. And you've done, you guys have done such wonderful job. Oh, thanks. That's probably because you can't hear them screaming now about the fact that they just got told to go out. <laughs> Padded doors, right? Yeah, yeah. Sound. <laughs> Shut the door a little lock. <laughs> I, I really want to thank you for being um, kind about the. It was the recording quality. It really was. Oh, yeah, I know that. Yeah. That song was. I, I watched it on the video after you. I didn't really want to watch the rest of it, but I did want to see how well that came through. And I was like, oh, that's <laughs> terrible. I'll have to. I'll have to record it for you separate and send it to you so you can see it. 
Yeah. I guess the, the, the lyrics came through clear enough so you could hear what was in the song. Hmm. That's yeah. about it. <laughs> That's okay. You never know with Mr. Skype. <laughs> Aw, poor Skype. Yeah. He's always working so hard for us. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I was thinking about playing you another song, you know, until I saw that. And I was going, yeah, no. That's... <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. Uh, I try that's to do some though. original stuff. I'm, I am looking forward to doing that video series with Adam. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I yes. talked talk to him this week about doing that. Yeah. I, I'm looking forward to it because I don't know. I think I copied you guys on a correspondence that I had with a sister who had just, I mean, raked Sister Phyllis up and down the coals this week. Mm. Called her like 20 times and then she was writing to me and just was brutal, you know, mm. about that store. Mm. And it's all true and, and Lou plagiarized all his work. Did you see that? Yeah. I copied you on what I sent to her. I think that they sent one to Lou as well, didn't they? Or he sent that we saw as well. One of the same thing mm. that you're saying sent to them. Too. Yeah. It was, I, I, you know, I was talking to Adam about it, and the thing of it is just basically, well, most people, if there's nothing out, else out there to see, it's not a matter of defending yourself. I mean, if that was the thing that was the hardest was that, you know, this sister was saying, I've got tape recordings of Phyllis just trying to convince me that she's legit. And I was like, well, thank goodness she has enough patience left to even try to do that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I can't imagine the patience that she must be showing to even attempt yeah. you, you, doing that. You know, and and I let her know, you know, I mean, all this stuff I can understand. There's only one side of the story, really, that's getting out there on the YouTube and mm. and all that. But leave her out of it, you know. Yeah. If people have trouble with Lou, whatever, we can handle it. That, that's probably one of the reasons why he's the target, why Yahusha allows him to be the target, is because he can handle it, mm. you know. Mm. You, you know, and... It's probably better that some people aren't. I don't know. I mean, I got to be careful how I say it. But mm. at any rate, what she was saying, I was going, well, it, you know, if we go out there and we put videos on YouTube that defend him, mm. well, whenever it's, whenever you're defending yourself, it just makes you look more guilty, you know. Yeah. But mm. That's why if we, we can, <laughs> yeah. I, I have designed myself not to defend against these attacks. Uh, you know, let Yahushua be uh, our defender. If people ask a question, I answer the question. You know, yeah. uh, if if there's any question as to whether or not I love our brother and sister Lou, you know, I don't care who knows it. We we love them. You know, uh, yeah. and I hope that Yahushua is glorified in that. Yeah. Uh, but. Um, there is there is a certain element of ridiculousness that goes on there, and yeah, it's all plagiarized. I was like, "What well, plagiarizes when you steal work and you don't give the references? Yeah. All the references and fossilized customs are there. I've looked up the source material because he he references it all. Yeah. You know, that's how I validated all of the research that he did." Yeah. And I, for one, am very thankful he took the time to put it all in one place. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Made things as we do, you know, as he was standing on the backs of other Nazarene before him, <clears throat> and as we're standing on the backs of the Nazarene that come before us, it's it's becoming simpler and simpler to share the message with people. And it's not something that we own. You know, we don't. We're not looking for a profit as you know, and if, if that was all brother Lou's about, well, if we actually get with the, the point, which is to spread that word, he's selling fossilized customs at cost. Mm -hmm. Try buying 10 copies from him. Yeah. You know, he'll pay $4 and 10 cents a piece. Mm -hmm. That's how much he paid to make them, you know, yeah. 
That doesn't sound like a person who's trying to be rich. Hmm. No. You know, I mean, yeah, if you buy a single copy, whatever. Yeah. But how many people actually get that book because they bought it? Yeah, not many. Did you guys buy your first copy? No. I don't think so. No. no. Maybe. I didn't. No. no. Somebody gave it to me. Yeah. I don't. I've never met anybody that the first copy that they had was one they bought. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe they're out there. But... Oh, hey, look, that's an interesting thing. Let me buy that book. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Almost, I would venture to say that probably the vast majority of the people that just have a single copy, it's because somebody gave it to them. Yeah. 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 Mm. That's, that's just a guess. If I were to hazard a guess. Yeah. Well, that's wonderful, brother. Mm. It's been nice hanging out with you. <laughs> yeah, you too. Yeah. I'm glad we kind of got it together. I don't know what to do about this camera. Mm. I'm going to try to get it working better. Maybe if I can Skype a couple other people and figure out what's wrong with it. Mm. I hate to do it right here whenever you're recording everything. That's all right. No problem. I was, we, this is our fourth attempt at recording. We, oh, really? We were testing his camera. Oh. Mm. It was a bit jumpy. Oh. So now he's, you're on the laptop now. It seems now. okay. Oh, this is a different one. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I was going to say, it My, seems fine to me. <laughs> yeah. The laptop is Skype enabled, so I guess it just does it. But I got this other one trying to boost the quality a little bit and it sort of worked the opposite way. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's because of the distance. I'm not sure. I'll just have to play with it for a little bit and see if I can get it working. Yeah. But it'd be nice. Yeah. You know, I guess yeah. until then, you know, the laptop works just fine too. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's fine here. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I don't know that we've uh, <clears throat> covered anything of particular importance, but I was really happy to meet you today. Sister. Yeah, it's and, very exciting to come in finally. <laughs> yeah. I've seen you on, you know, I've seen you and I've heard your voice, wonderful voice for uh, recording and uh, <clears throat> your singing voice, I mean, and um, I'm very glad to have had the opportunity to meet you. I don't know what happened to my wife. She seems <laughs> to have disappeared. <laughs> but, uh, you know, on her behalf, uh, you know, very good to meet you too. Maybe you girls could get together sometime too. I, I can uh, send you her Skype address. Oh, yeah, so you great. Can, uh, have an Shame. opportunity Shame. to do that. Maybe in between classes or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> if you ever get time to do stuff. Yeah. Do you, uh, you kind of meld everything together, or do you have to be very age-specific on everything? Oh, no, we do everything together. So we sort of just every activity gets whatever skill level they're at. We'll say Jasar, being the oldest, will do a bit more or something a bit more yeah. in depth, or maybe he'll do the hands on part of the activity and the other boys will watch. Um, but generally, we try to do everything together. They do have some school books that they do, but we sit around together and they do school books together. But most of our stuff has to be, you know, doable for everyone. So, that's <laughs> like a fa I mean, just getting to stay together as a family, that's it's so strong ever since. My oldest decided, I'm going to public school. Oh, really? You know, it's been it's been a challenge. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> she's interesting because she's just at that age. She's 16, you know. She's a really good person. She just she's in the age where she's not doing anything just because her parents told her to do it. And uh, it's it's a real challenge as parents to step aside and say you know what it's interesting because yeah you who should i can't imagine any one of us wanting to be married to somebody that was married to us at the point of a gun yeah. you know like if you know if uh if amy had to be married to you by force would you want to be married or do you want to be married because she wants to be married to you? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. With Yahusha, it's the same way. If I force my child into a marriage covenant with the Messiah, 
I don't know that the Messiah would even want that. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. if she doesn't yearn for him, if it's not something that her heart is going after, mm -hmm. well, then it just isn't. You know? Yeah. She she had uh, difficulty with the Passover celebration this year and decided to. She didn't leave, but she was sort of not present. You know, she was in a room or whatnot. And when we had our discussion about it, she was just saying, she's just, because I, I don't know. You know, she, her answer was, uh, <clears throat> I don't want to eat it with this doubt in my heart. I don't want to be engaging in it when I'm not working. You're maybe not working. Yes. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Anyway, foreshadow of things to come. I'm sure you'll get to go through all of it. Yeah. I'm not so excited yeah. about that bit. <laughs> no, but hey, when the time comes, I, I'll be very glad that we know each other, you know, and uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm I, looking forward to a long uh, and fruitful relationship with, with all of the Nazarene that we're meeting. And yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, it's just wonderful to know that we have this sense of community, even though we're salt and we're so far apart. Mm. We have an opportunity to lean on one another and learn from each other and fellowship with one another. and yeah. It's just very beautiful. It's mm -hmm. very beautiful. And, and that's how other people will be called yeah. because they'll see yeah. the love that we share with one another. You know, Yahushua says that very plainly that that's, that's how they know you yeah. because they see the way we treat each other. You know? So it's really great. It's awesome to get to, have that opportunity, yeah. you know, still while I can sit here and be at work, mm -hmm. still have fellowship with you guys. Yeah. yeah. Real it's blessed. Very, it's very encouraging having that because, you know, when you're surrounded by people who think the opposite of you everywhere you go, it's just yeah. totally encouraging to be able to have that people around that, you know, think the same way as you, that feel the same way as you, that believe mm -hmm. the same thing as you. Because no one around yeah. us does, like not around down here. You know, we've got friends and things down here, mm. but everyone, yeah. you know, they might do something that they think is perfectly normal and we think it's just, you know, <laughs> I'll go and have a ham sandwich. And <laughs> yeah, right. Things like that. What's going on? Whatever. I know what you mean. I mean, it <clears throat> it, it makes things pleasant. It's, it's uh, what we believe, of course, doesn't require anybody else to believe in it to make it true in it it doesn't for that it's <clears throat> it's like it's but when we do get to meet each other it's like just icing on the cake you know yeah. I, you know I, and I'm really glad that I'm really glad that father's given us an insight into into things well enough you know that even though there's a lot of muck on the porn or muck on the, uh, and, and pornography and things like that on the internet uh, and violence and, and all that stuff, there's, um, there's still the basic physics of it and the beautiful, uh, realities that come from him showing us how his universe works. Yeah. You know, that's why I don't ever say, uh, I don't like to say, um, well, when you look at these two, you know, when you look at this organism or whatever in nature, you ever hear people say that? <laughs> look over here and this is how this is done in nature. And you're going, what? No. Look over here and look how this is done in creation. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. No, no, there's no mother nature or whatever all you're talking about. Look over here and see how this organism behaves in creation. Mm. Anyway, it's it's interesting because these little things kind of get slipped in over time. And, you know, mm. here we are just going, did you see that? <laughs> rid of that. The other one is, I feel so fortunate to be, you know, able to communicate with you guys. Mm. <clears throat> well, wait a second. Fortunate? That has to do with luck. Yeah. No, no, no! Can't can't be fortunate. That's that's not you. Oh. Mm. 
I, I feel so blessed. Yeah. I feel blessed by our creator to have that opportunity with you. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wonderful, brother. Yeah. Well, it's it's kind of my dinner time, actually, mm. past. Um, <laughs> <Okay>. <clears throat> <clears throat> I think we're getting kind of long on it anyway, so I'll, I'm going to sign off. And, yeah. uh, um, it was wonderful to meet you both. I was very excited to be here for it today. Me too. Me too. Well, I hope you'll be back next time. I know that some this time is better for Mark in the uh, salon. Yeah. Because of the festival. Mm. I don't know. We'll work something out. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you, Father, you know, for giving us the opportunity to do this. May your name be praised and may whoever watches this be blessed and in our fellowship and may they know that we're our hearts are toward them and our prayers are with them mm. and you you for all for whom all heaven and earth are named mm. so be it Amen. Amen. Yeah. well you guys have a blessed week and uh enjoy pesach and uh, yes, you too. i I, uh, I hope you all have a wonderful holiday i guess the best way to say it is Tob Moed, you know, yeah. happy holiday, <laughs> Tob Moed, and uh, um, I'll see you next week. Yeah. Yeah. Bye, see you, mate. Mate. Forever don't rise. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. See you later, mate. Hello.